Today's guest is the man who dreamt up the mega musical Wicked and wrote its unforgettable score. Now, as Wicked prepares to enter its ninth year on Broadway, he's back in rehearsals with the very first Broadway revival of Godspell. Please welcome Stephen Schwartz. Hey, Paul. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be here. This is kind of a, a big fall for you, it seems like. Yeah, it's crazy a little bit. Just an awful lot happening. But uh, yesterday was the meet and greet for Godspell, so too late to turn back now. So do you know everyone's name? Have you met and Gret everyone? I met and Gret. Um, <laughs> I know the names of the cast. I know, I know, yeah, cast, staff, but, you know, they're, they're always, it's so strange because I walked into the room and there were 150 people there. And I didn't even know if we had a meet and greet the first time we did Godspell. I don't remember. Right. But if we did, maybe there were 15 people there, you know. So it just was kind of amazing to see this personnel explosion. But then, along with me, we all went away. And now it's down to the, the 10 cast members and the director and choreographer and uh, musical director, and they'll do their thing. So it's this little tiny show with all these people behind it. I know. It's very, <laughs> very strange. And we've been waiting for Godspell to return to Broadway. There have been a few uh, sort of notable productions. There was an off-Broadway production that I saw with uh, Chad Kimball, Leslie Kritzer, Barrett Foa. Yeah, well, that's the thing about Godspell is that, you know, there are all these, these people who you really haven't heard of before, or maybe you've heard a little bit of a couple, and then some of them just go on to be big stars because very often this is their first job. Right. So yeah, there was there have been a couple of off-Broadway productions. And then your son directed a national tour. He did a national tour, which right. was amazing and very right. sort of, uh, it was set in a computer graveyard. It was, oh, wow. it was really wild with green screen stuff. And yeah, it was, it was, that was a fun production. So too. what's the trick to uh, pulling off Godspell? I mean, it seems like kind of show I guess you can sort of go a lot of different directions with. Yeah, well, I think you sort of mentioned what I think the secret ingredient is, which you find 10 amazingly talented and creative people. Um, you know, it's, it's a weird audition process, and some people are very freaked out by it um, because they're used to coming in and they sing their song and they get their little lines and they read their lines and do the scene. And in Godspell, they have to come in and improvise things. Ah. And they just get a couple of parables and they have to choose a parable and kind of act it out. And, but the really, you know, creative people do amazing things. They write songs and they bring in puppets and they make props and they do all this wild stuff. And you, you need to get 10 people who are very inventive like that. And I think there are, you know, 10 really amazing people. And, and some of them, you know, I think theater people will know a little bit, Hunter Parrish and Nick Blamire yeah. and, you know, some people like that who, yeah. you know, are somewhat known, but the, I think the general public will be in for a pleasant surprise. Why do you think it took so long for the show to come back? It's a very beloved show. People know it. It's done regionally. It's done in schools. Uh, people know it really well. Why do you think it took so long to come back? Do you think that people consider it to be of a certain time? Um, well, I mean, uh, perhaps, but I mean, from time to time, people had talked to me about it, and the particular there wasn't a particular production that right, right. I thought um, you know, was was the right one, and um, the timing, sort of where we are as a society, mm -hmm. the, um, you know, because when Godspell was first done, it was the Vietnam War and the generation gap, and it was another time when our society seemed very fragmented and kind of uh, pulling apart, and Godspell kind of addresses that, because it's sort of about a community, the formation of a community, and this seems another time when maybe we could use a little bit of <laughs> community building here in, right. in America. I know that before the phenomenal success of Wicked, you had sort of uh, written off commercial theater and Broadway as just being, I guess, uh, not the kind of environment you wanted to work in. Is it, is it uh, nerve-wracking to put something like Godspells, something from your past, into a commercial setting? No, because it's not a new show. You know, okay. I, it's still not the kind of environment I particularly want to work in on a, on a new show, to be perfectly honest. Um, there are a lot of stresses that make it difficult to um, I find to, to do the kind of work one wants to do. But, um, you know, Godspell exists, and yes, there are, I've done a little bit of new um, music for it in a couple of spots, and obviously it's a n new conception and, you know, very interesting new um, 
musical arrangements by uh, Michael Holland, who's mm -hmm. extremely talented. I've admired him for a long time. But it's not like creating a show where, you know, people are looking over your shoulder and it's very hard to just focus on your work. It's funny that um, this great musical that everybody loves about the Christ, Jesus Christ, and the teachings of Christ was written by a Jewish man. And you actually had to sort of research. I was reading uh, this book, Defining right. Gravity, and you actually had to sort of research all this as if almost like you were researching the story of Wicked. You exactly. Sort of yeah, I really didn't know it. I didn't know the parables. Um, and I mean, obviously, everybody knows the, the basic Jesus story. Um, but Godspell is much less concerned with that than, as you say, right. sort of what he actually said. Um, and, and the teachings, and, and the truth is that I, that I didn't know a lot of them. I mean, I'd heard the term Good Samaritan, but I didn't actually know the parable, and I'd heard the term Prodigal Son, but I didn't actually know right. what it came from. Um, yeah, so that was uh, quite an education. Now, this book, I keep referring to this, this book, Defying, yes, Defying, Defying, Gravity, Defying Gravity, which yeah. came out, um, there you are with, with Wicked on With it. my little Wicked poster. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this book is actually, uh, it's, it's not very scandalous, uh, you know, it's sort of a very cut and dry well, career. Well, because it's, it's not about my scandalous life. So I, come on, I, tell, I didn't, no, let's find out about your no, scandalous life. No, that was the whole point. I said <laughs> when, when Carol DeGier, who was writing the book, approached me about it, I said she could, you know, I, I was happy for her to do a book about sort of my, my work and my career. Um, right. and but, your process. And my process, but for whatever use it would be to, to other people, but that I didn't want something really about my life. We'll wait till I'm dead for that one. So there's no, uh, so there's no, there wasn't any uh, hippie, hip, what about drugs and free love? I'm, and, you know, I'm, if it's not, I'm not telling. <laughs> it's you know, not in the book. It's not in the book. No, I'm not telling. <laughs> you did have some uh, awesome hippie fashion. There's a great picture. Yeah, of, there's of, some, some embarrassing. Bernstein. That's so embarrassing. In that your mock garb. Yeah, and it's sort of like with my little shoes that are turned up. It's like what the well-dressed leprechaun is wearing. Just, <laughs> what was I thinking? You're a stylish guy. Uh, well, I, I don't know how stylish those things were. That was <laughs> kind of embarrassing when I look at them now. Now, the other thing that sort of shocked me about uh, reading this book is wh what do you have to do to get a good review from the critics? I mean, I, I have a very... I've given up. <laughs> I never get good reviews in New York. I actually get... I've, I've got, I mean, I don't read reviews. Um, right. in, in, unless you used I'm in to read reviews. Yes, and I learned not to do it. I do read reviews if I'm in process okay. um, because I find taken as an aggregate, they can actually be very helpful. Like when Wicked was out of town? Yeah, I read all the reviews or that's really how we fix Children of Eden by getting uh -huh. all yeah. the England reviews and reading all of them in one sitting and saying, oh, you know what, they're not getting this. Yeah. And this is something that's not working. You can yeah. really, it really can help you to fix things. But once something is done, I, I, I've learned not to read them good, bad, or indifferent. But for whatever reason, you know, the New York critics just don't like me, and I've just had to learn to live with that. It so just seems that's comical. How it, is. it seems comical at this point, though, that you have so many shows people love. I, it must be a sensibility thing. Do I don't think, think I don't think anybody has it in for me. Right. I've never met any of these people. Right. I don't, I've never done anything bad to their children <laughs> or their boyfriends or whatever. Um, you know, I just think their sensibility is different than mine, and they just don't like my work, and they're entitled to their opinion. You've written so many shows. Which which are which uh, didn't make it on Broadway that I love so many shows. I'm Thank Baker's you. Wife, Working, Children of Eden, Rags. Uh, which of which of those shows do you think is most ripe for a return to Broadway? Um, well, Working just had a very successful um, production in Chicago. The show that kind of is floating around out there that's really I think. Um, you know, it's, it's never been in New York, and it has more to do with the size of it and some logistical problems that it presents is Children of Eden. Right. You know, and, and it, I really would like to see sometime, you know, a, a first class in terms of mm -hmm. the, you know, the personnel and the size and everything, production of that. I mean, there was an amazing production at Paper Mill, in fact, right. back in the right, 90s, right, which right. did very well. And, um, you know, but uh, for various practical reasons, they didn't, they didn't move it across the river. You, you, you say that you like this book because it's not just triumph to triumph, and it sort of explores the low points. What was, uh, what was, your, what was your, your darkest moment? Oh, gosh, there have been so many. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, the, uh, really, after working opened and, yeah. and, and um, was not initially successful, um, though then, of course, it, you know, there's a happy ending to that story. Of, but, um, and that was after the, that was sort of the, the um, end of my kind of, 
those days of working in New York and doing nothing mm -hmm. but working in New York and one show after another after another, and I just was feeling so beaten down. And as you as you pointed out, you know, I, I really did not enjoy the working un under those circumstances. You know, I, I don't really like doing Broadway shows, which sounds like it's silly for me to say. I mean, I'm very happy working in, you know, little regional theaters, or mm -hmm. not so little regional mm -hmm. theaters, but mm -hmm. under those circumstances, and then if the show works out and, you know, it wants to move, great. Right. But actually doing a show for Broadway, I, f I, you know, and other people just love it, and, and I just find it very difficult, and I just was so burned out at that point. Um, so that was a pretty low point. Can I read you a quote from this book? Uh-oh. I'm quoting you. Uh-oh. Because this, this quote really jumped it's out. It's so scary right. to me. <laughs> I wonder what I said. Maybe I didn't actually say it. Okay, well, well it you up. can deny it if you want. Uh, I, <laughs> here we go. I was just this kid who came into New York with illusions of what it would be like to work on Broadway, how it's all going to be this glamorous, collegial, wonderful atmosphere, and the community of the theater, and all that total bullshit they say on the Tony Awards. That's absolutely true. That's I stand by that. pretty angry. Well, do you feel like an, an I don't outsider? think that's angry. I think it's just true. That's that's been my experience. Okay, you know, yeah, I've never felt like a real part of the, which is weird because I have so many friends right. in in this business, and I'm the president of the Dramatist Guild for <laughs> right. God's sake, right. and, you know. Um, but I but I've never really felt a part of the New York theater community, which is okay, you know. But yeah, I don't consider that angry. I just think that's that is an accurate. Um, Realistic. Picture of, 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 of what my experience has been, and it's and it's just um, that's just a fact, you know. Uh huh. Um, here's another thing you can either deny or <laughs> is it how the night that that uh, Wicked did not win the Tony Award for Best Musical or Best Score? How I hear that you were sort of obviously very upset at, at the loss for Best Score. Is that is that? I was upset about the entire. I mean that month was the worst month the of my life. The campaigning I month. just hated it. Uh, it, it was got, it so got really unpleasant. Brutal. It got very brutal. It was so unpleasant, and there was all this politics going on, yeah. and people, you know, calling people behind the scenes yeah. and making wheeling and dealing, and there were some things said about me in the Times by producers mm. of, of other shows ah. who thought I wouldn't find out that it was they who said it, and it was just so ugly. And, and all was, the things you hate about Broadway. All the things I hate about Broadway were just there in that month. And, um, you know, I'm not so big on awards anyway. I mean, I've won my share of awards, and I think you kind of sometimes win for things you shouldn't have won for and mm -hmm. don't win for things right. you should have won for right. and, you know, whatever. But the, the whole experience was incredibly unpleasant. So Tony yeah. Knight was just like the rough finale of all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And fortunately, I never have to go again. And so. uh, for, so, for some strange reason, you've never won a Tony, but you have your Oscar to keep you warm. Yeah, I, I mean that's what I'm saying. I've won my share of awards, yeah. so whatever. Where, where's your Oscar? Is it is it sort of? A um, I actually have three of them. If you really want to know oh, the truth, three? since I'm you're sorry. talking, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, do they all sit together? No, two of them are in Connecticut in my house, but I brought one into New York, which because people like to hold it and talk about how, how heavy it is. And what I love about the one in New York is that maybe because it was too close to a heating unit or whatever, it's peeling. Okay, oh, and wow. so what what it is is that. There's the thinnest, thinnest veneer of gold leaf on this thing, um, and it's all peeling. Um, and, and underneath it is, it's lead, or some kind of uh -huh. gray right. metal, right. Um, which is why it's so heavy. Um, and so I feel like that sort of just says something about <laughs> awards in general, that it's this little, little gold veneer. But um, listen, I'm very, you know, I, I was thrilled to win Oscars because, you know, it's the Oscars, and yeah. I, it never occurred to me that I was going to have a movie career at all, let alone, you know, be an Academy Award winner. So that that was fun, and the and the ceremony was fun. And you wrote you know, some so beautiful songs uh, for the animated movies, and and I, people like me, I thought you would never be back after that. You know what I mean? Like you kind of. Well, if I hadn't, someone hadn't told me about this book. Right, you know, in Hawaii. I was in Hawaii, <laughs> and Holly Near, my friend Holly Near, the folk singer, said. You know, we were on a snorkeling trip with a bunch of us, <laughs> right. and literally just randomly on the way back on the boat, she said, oh, I'm reading this really interesting book, and it's called Wicked, and it's the kind of the Oz story from the Wicked Witch's point of view, and I just thought that was the best idea I had ever heard in my life, and that it was so me in so many ways, mm -hmm. 
and there really was no way to avoid doing another Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. And you know, um, obviously, I'm glad I did. And you know, I love the people that I worked with. It was you know, a, a very happy family. Difficult birth. Always. Yeah. I mean, I've no, I've, I mean, maybe some people have do Broadway shows and they just come sailing through, <laughs> and everyone loves right. everybody, and they just have a great time. But I just, they're like wars to me. Do the, the idea of the movie is sort of hovering, and it will definitely happen at some point. I'm going from here to a meeting to talk about the, about the movie. Just, yeah. Can we bring our cameras get and it, uh, film it? You know, we're just, it's, we're in the process of like choosing a director, wow. making the deal, getting started on the, on the plans. So, I mean, I think we're talking a good five years yeah. away at least, but you we're think, getting started. What did you think of last year? There was a little internet sensation because uh, an animator had made a storyboard of Defying I Gravity. I that. That was so cool. Do you, I love you people do that. You have obviously a lot of history in uh, animated movies. Do you think yeah. that Wicked maybe should be considered as an animated movie? Or? I don't, actually. Okay. I don't think it's a really good idea for, for an animated movie um, for, for a bunch of reasons, but much as I enjoyed seeing the storyboard. Yeah. that yeah. Uh, Which immediately got yanked yeah. from the <laughs> I know. I was kind of sorry about that. I'm glad I got to see it before it got pulled. What about uh, Leah Michelle as Alphaba? Um, I think she'd be great. You know, I mean, there are a lot of people out there I think would be good. Some of, frankly, depends on when the movie gets made and right. how old people are. Of course, are, right. You know, it so. might be someone who's 11 now. I have a feeling that we have not heard of the people who are going to be playing these right. leads because they're in high school right now. Right. But I could be wrong. You could be wrong. Could be Michelle, who knows? What about any of your other animated movies on stage? I know Hunchback of Notre Dame has been done. And that's still, that's kind of a little bit in the works. You again. think it might end up on yeah, Broadway? Yeah, because I think it's, well, I don't know if it would end up on Broadway, but I Somewhere, but yeah. it's sort of in the works again because it's the most sort of theatrical yeah. of the ones I've done. Though everyone is constantly talking to me about Prince of Egypt. For yeah. Once a month, I get some email from someone saying, I, I want to see Prince of Egypt on stage, and I just constantly refer them to Jeffrey Katz and Burgess and call Jeffrey. <laughs> Do you like the idea of, of doing that, of translating those to the stage, or not necessarily? Hunchback, I kind of do, because yeah. I feel there's something inherently theatrical about it, and I think we could do something, as we did in Berlin when it was done as yeah. De Glockner von Notre Dame. Um, <laughs> I heard it was great. And it was great, actually. Yeah. And I think that um, we learned some things from that, and, and I feel there's, there's another thing to be done with it that's, that's different than the animated movie. But, you know, I, it's like people talk to me about, would you do a sequel to Wicked? And I feel like, well... No, because right. I said what I had to say about right, that. Right. So I'm not too keen on sort of revisiting things unless you can do something different. I just as soon let someone else do it. Have you thought about new songs for the Wicked movie? You must, have you like in your head, you have to win another Oscar, obviously, because <laughs> you need a fourth, and one of yours is crumbling. I know, so it's have crumbling. You they out, would fix it. I'm sure they would fix it. Have you I figured out which it. moments in the show would, could use a new song? Or? Um, we're not up to that yet. Okay. We're not up to that yet. But I mean, I'm sure we will, you know, take a look at the material again and see what feels appropriate. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to wedge a song in just for the purpose of right. trying to be eligible for an Oscar. I mean, I'm working on a new animated movie now, um, actually a Bollywood thing with A.R. Rahman ah. that we're doing for DreamWorks. So, you right. know, I'll have my opportunities to do other things for the movies. But right. um, I think, you know, if new songs are called for, obviously we'll do them. So you obviously, I keep saying this, but Wicked is enormous. It might end up. It may end up if Phantom ever closes. It might end up being Phantom's never going to close. So. <laughs> <laughs> that's the that's the prediction. Yeah, it's my prediction. Never. So Not what are, in my lifetime? So what are these? Uh, so what, you got weekly checks. What are these checks like? Um, are you, have you become I, known done, to these to I've your done, bank account? I've done well from Wicked. You know, I mean, that's the the nice thing about being a writer is if you have a success, then you know you've done your work and you keep getting paid for it. So uh -huh. you know, I'm. You know, it, I, I'm not worried about uh, putting food on the table. Let's put it that it, way. Is there like a, um, I know you have a nice house in Connecticut mm -hmm. that Godspell probably helped you buy. It did, yes. So is there like a, a wicked... bought, pip and furnished. Is, is there know. like a wicked island somewhere or a I yacht? I bought a piano or? from, from. I mean, you know, I, I, I bought myself a Bösendorfer piano. I guess it's actually pronounced Bösendorfer. But I'd always wanted a verse. So that's a wicked piano. gift to yourself. Yeah, that was a wicked gift to myself. Now you're in a sort of a funny position because Wicked and Gospel are both playing right next to each other. We have Circle in the Square, and I know that's your little that's that's Stephen Schwartz alley right show. now. I know I'm a little freaked out about it actually. People say, um, you know, uh, oh, it's so exciting and it's so cool that you have these two shows right next to each other. But but to me, it just feels like tempting fate. You know, I just feel nervous about it. But it is it is convenient. I have to say. <laughs> That's like the bookends of your career. 
Exactly right. Your first well, and I your latest. Like that. Yeah, my, the, for their first show, the last show, and there they are. So, so if someone's going to nice. do a Stephen Schwartz day, which one should they see first? Should they do it in order? Or? They should do it in order. They should, they should see Godspell matinee. first. And then where should they have Godspell dinner? Godspell matinee, dinner? and then go see. Um, oh, well, there are great restaurants there. First of all, there's the best Mexican restaurant in the city, or one of the two best Mexican oh, yes. restaurants in the city, Toloac. Tolache, I guess yeah. it's pronounced. Yes, yes. Uh, however you pronounce it, it's so amazing. So you recommend, Stephen I, Schwartz recommends. Stephen Schwartz recommends Tolache, he recommends the Palm, and he recommends Thalia. Yeah, <laughs> three really good restaurants right there. Wonderful. And Godspell, of course, and Wicked. Oh, yeah, and, that too. And Godspell starts <laughs> October 13th at the Circle oh, in the no. Square Theater. God, any second. Thank you for coming by. This has been fun, and I'm embarrassed that I was so honest, but there you go. <laughs> I'm not. I think it's great. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time. Thank you.